you had that third failure in a row, did you think, I need to pack this in? Never. Why not? I don't ever give up. You must never give up. These clips might look familiar to you. In fact, you might have come across the Chinese proverb, fall down seven times but stand up eight, at some point in your life. Or Roosevelt's famous quote, if you believe you can, you're already halfway there. Our society is literally littered with motivational quotes and this glorification of positivity and grit. And don't get me wrong, I truly do believe that persistence can open a lot of doors that weren't there before. I can do this all day. But relying on persistence alone won't get you to where you wanna go. So when do you know when to stop and cut your losses in order to move on to something better? How do you give up in a way that'll help you later succeed? Well, let's break it down. So recently, the king of cold emailing, Alex Benayan, which if you don't know who that is, he's an international best-selling author who wrote the book, The Third Door, and he's interviewed a bunch of really cool people. Anyways, he came on the Colin and Samir show to reflect on a time where he should have given up when trying to book an interview with someone really famous. You might have heard of him. Okay, you wanna hear a, a very ugly failure? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, so one of the people I wanted to reach out to the most was Warren Buffett. My naive 18 year old brain thought if I can just get Buffett, everything would work out. So I decided I wasn't gonna do anything else until Warren Buffett said yes. Cause I'd read all these books that said persistence is the key to success. I send a letter to him every single month, handwritten. I call his office every single week and he actually handwrites responses back to me. But his responses are always no thank you. And as you guys know, after three months of straight rejections, it feels like there's a cloud above your head. By six months of straight rejections, it feels like you're ready to cough up blood. I decide, you know what? I'm just gonna keep calling his office every single week because I want this more than he doesn't want this. A month later, I ended up getting the interview with Bill Gates through a completely different avenue. And the interview with Bill Gates ended up going so well that at the end of the interview, Bill Gates' chief of staff said, we love what you're doing, how can we help? So of course I took out a very long list and handed it over to them. And he looks at the top of the list and sees Warren Buffett. And he goes, oh, that's easy. Bill and Warren are best friends. We'll take care of that one tomorrow, no big deal. But a week later, I get a email from Bill Gates, the chief of staff, saying, Dear Alex, please no more contact with Warren's office. Thank you. And what I had to realize is that persistence is not about knocking on one door a hundred times, it's about knocking on a hundred different doors. Okay, honestly, that is so ballsy. I would never be able to reach out to Warren Buffett that many times, but it also makes sense. There are limits to your persistence and it's up to you to kind of recognize where that limit exists. This is clearly a time where Alex should have given up. And had he given up, he would have potentially landed the Buffett interview through Bill Gates. And that last clip in particular is really important when it comes to trying the same strategy for different scenarios. In fact, let's take a look at that clip one more time. Let's just rewind the clip, shall we? Persistence is not about knocking on one door a hundred times. It's about knocking on a hundred different doors. So some people might react well to persistence while others may not, like Warren Buffett. The outcome isn't always up to you, but in order to optimize for the best possible outcome, you have to know when to give up knocking on one door and then start knocking on another. Persistence and quitting can actually work hand in hand. You just have to be smart about how you get there. This brings us to the sunken cost fallacy. <sighs> Oh, that's hot. That's really, really hot. Okay, moving on. Let's take a closer look. The phenomenon whereby a person is reluctant to abandon a strategy or course of action because they have invested heavily in it, even when it's clear that abandonment would be more beneficial. I don't know why this is like a dapper definition. Like this should have been way easier to explain, but basically sunken cost fallacy is you're reluctant to abandon a strategy because you put so much time and effort into it. You've invested a lot into the strategy. And so you don't want to make all of those investments go to waste. So what did Alex give up in order to continue with his goal of getting to Buffett. What was his sunken cost? Well, a lot of time was wasted, but he also threw away his opportunity
opportunity to have a meeting with Buffett in the future, he had finally started to book some influential guests, including Bill Gates. Had he eased up on his persistence? Maybe, just maybe, Gates could have gotten him that interview in real life. And I'm sure many of us have fallen prey to this before. We put so much time and effort into something that we refuse to let those efforts go to waste. But sometimes, if we keep going, it forces us to waste even more time and resources. And a lot of times, we still won't get to the outcome that we're looking for. And that's what helps to make a pros and cons list. You guys probably can't see it again, but this is my trusty whiteboard, if you remember. And I know it sounds really, really basic, but trust me, even just writing things down and visually looking at it, it can help you figure out what you want to do in the future. Here we go. Let's try a theoretical situation. What if I wanted to quit or give up on my job? What pros and cons would I list out for staying at my job? Okay, class, so we have a comprehensive list as such. So let's look at some of these items, shall we? Basically, one of the pros is financial stability. And this also means stability in just having a job in general, because I think it's very hard to go out into the market and find a new one. I don't think that would be as big of a factor if the market wasn't what it was like today. Another pro of having my job is the social interaction. Every single day, I have a set group of people my team, basically, where I can go talk with them and have these interactions that I don't get normally if I didn't have a job. Lastly, the perks. I think people don't really think about the perks that often, but having a 401k match, having good healthcare at a great price, having perks like the $1,500 a year stipend for buying things for your health, that's given through Microsoft and just a lot of other little perks and benefits like discounts on airfare and hotels and car rentals and things like that. Now, the cons. My growth has kind of stagnated and I'm sure this is different across like different teams at Microsoft, but yeah, I mean, I don't really have much to say there, but your growth is limited, especially if you stay in one place for a very long time. And then there's also less freedom, right? I have a job, a nine to five, where I'm coming in, clocking in at nine, leaving at five. A lot of times I'll clock in after five o'clock. Another con is that I can't really focus on YouTube full time and YouTube is kind of my passion. So having that extra time, if I didn't have a job, would be really nice to just focus on telling stories and connecting with the audience that I have. That's something that's very limited when I'm working my nine to five job. So there's obviously more pros and cons that I could have listed, but this is just a theoretical example of what your pros and cons list could look like. Now, if one list is significantly longer than the other, you kind of have your answer as to if you should give that thing up or not. Giving up is a really serious decision to make. It's different than persistence because with persistence, you've been doing it for so long that it kind of just feels intuitive to keep going. Whereas with giving up, you're making a major pivot in the decision-making process. So you really wanna sit down, ruminate on that decision, think about what the consequences are of that. So this is where the pros and cons list will really help out. But in all honesty, I wanted to get more data points. I wanted to find real life examples of people who quit or gave something up only to find success in another way. So who better to ask than the two people I know have a really hard time giving things up, but did it for the betterment of their lives? My parents. Maybe shift that way a little. Just a little, not a lot. Okay, too much. Okay, now put it on. What happened? Nothing, <laughs> just put it on. I don't know if you did that. Hello, this is my father, Sanjay Dutt. Tell us about a time where you decided to give up in order to be successful. So I was doing a contract with Accenture and I was there for about close to a year and wasn't really feeling like I was going anywhere. So I started looking for a job. I have been in the IT infrastructure space uh, throughout my career. And there was a point in my, my career where um, working at, uh, at Cargill, um, I had reached uh, the peak of where I could uh, in my technical space. There was an opening uh, opportunity that showed up uh, in a leadership space. And uh, I, went, I spoke to my manager then, he said, you know, if you're interested, you give it a shot. And if you don't like it, you know, you can always come back in a couple of years. I did land a job in uh, Best Buy. Once I got there, just right from day one, uh, I was just not feeling it. So I stuck it out for a couple of months. I was ready to give it up and uh, 
you know, go back to my contract that I was in. It was very difficult for me to to give up uh, that that role and uh, choose something that was completely unknown. I didn't know if it was a good fit. I knew once I gave that position up, somebody else would get it. So it was not an easy position, uh, not an easy decision to make. Uh, nonetheless, I gave it a shot and I was selected uh, for that role. I've been doing it now for 11 years and enjoying every minute of it. And I think it was really the right uh, decision for me. Once I did that, I think it, I, I realized it was a great choice. It was, uh, you know, I really progressed from after that. I went and started uh, working at Target after that. I don't see that as a failure. I see that as giving up something, you know, early on for the success of the future. I think there are risks that you need to take, uh, calculated risks in your life. and. If you take those risks, uh, there are chances that you might be successful. If you don't try, you'll never know. That's, that's the mantra I would say. I would say listen to your instincts and gut. Uh, but I've always gone with my gut as well. When I don't get joy in what I'm doing and I don't see a future or a point in time where I'm going to get that joy, just follow your instinct and do what you need to do. My parents are typically not the kind of people to give up. In fact, they had a hard time thinking of examples when I asked them this question. But when they finally did think of something, the examples they gave were pretty pivotal to their career. My mom's decision to quit her job at Best Buy after only two months of working there propelled her into a completely different direction, yet a better career path. My dad's decision to quit also gave him a leg up and gave him the confidence and set boundaries with what he was willing to give up for a promotion. Had they not done this, they might have pushed for further and further into a path that was not meant to be. And speaking of pads that were not meant to be, I've decided that I'm just not really productive on my personal laptop anymore. It's just not working. Oh, what do you mean? Well, for one, every time I check my email, I've subscribed to so many newsletters that I can't even find the emails that I actually want to look at. Oh, that's easy. Check out this app. It's called Leave Me Alone. It lists out all your email subscriptions, so you can just unsubscribe with the click of a button. Oh, cool. That's great. but. Still, I get really distracted with my social media on my laptop. I'm always checking Instagram or TikTok. Oh, oh, there's an app for that too. It's called Focus. It basically blocks social media for you and you can use another app called Focus Work that time boxes your productivity for you. Here, check it out. Oh, wait, that's really cool. Where are you getting all these apps from? Wait, you haven't heard about Setapp? Setapp is the ultimate place to get apps for Mac and iPhone users. It offers a one-stop app subscription covering all the apps you need to solve your daily tasks. It has an app to organize your files and rename them, an app to test your Mac performance, a reader that will read you texts and PDFs out loud for you so you can multitask. They have over 250 apps to choose from that can boost a lot of your tasks and make you way faster in everything that you do. And how might you ask, will you find the right apps for you? Well, you can just search for the type of task you want to accomplish and Setapp's search engine will filter the right apps for you. It's also super affordable and easy to download. They have a free trial for seven days and after that, it's only $9.99 per month. So what are you waiting for? Download Setapp today. So once you do realize that something's not really worth the effort anymore, what do you do? Do you just give it all up and move on? Well, that's not always the best way to handle cutting your losses. First, you wanna identify the drain. Let's go back to my pros and cons list. I'm just gonna go grab it. Okay, so giving up can mean many different things. I like to think of it as embracing failure. And embracing failure is something that you can do at both the macro and the micro level. Again, theoretically speaking, let's say I have a pros and cons list, whether or not I should stay at my job. Totally theoretical. And part of the cons of staying at my job is that growth is limited. Particularly, there's a lot of context switching. So you don't really get to learn things in a deep way. So what should I do? A change needs to happen. I can no longer stay in this cycle forever, but what exactly should I give up in order to get to where I want to go? The solution could be anything from quitting my job to talking to my manager to find better work. It could even mean switching teams. Giving up means a lot of different things. And again, it can be something really big or it can be just a small thing that you end up giving up on. My point is that I can't make a decision just based on that one con. I have to weigh all of the factors together to figure out what that means to me. So identify the drain. 
it's harder than it looks. Once you've identified the drain, you need to ask yourself these two questions. And yes, I'm in a different location. You guys gotta deal with the wind, I'm sorry. If the answer to even one of these is true, then it's time to cut your losses. And if not, well, maybe it's time to rethink what the actual drain is. It's not always as simple as just making a big change in your life. It could mean just making small micro changes to pivot the way that you do things. So. How do you cut your losses? This kind of reminds me of the water and frog analogy. If you have a frog in cold water and you turn the temperature of the water up to the point where it's boiling, obviously the frog is gonna feel that it's really hot and just jump out. But instead, if you increase the temperature by one degree every single hour, at some point it'll get so hot that the frog won't realize that it's boiling because things have changed very slowly and incrementally. In less morbid terms, quit incrementally rather than quitting altogether so it's not a shock to your system. This is an easier way to start cutting your losses rather than making a huge change in your life that you're not ready for. Test the waters, see if it's warm, and then make the next step. At the end of the day, it's up to you whether or not you want to continue pursuing something in the name of persistence. Okay, I did make a lot of decisions in my life where I continue to persist for things, so I don't want to say that never persists. I think it's really important to put that characteristic up. It'll help you get through a lot of adversity in your life. And once you learn how to work hard, then the next step is working smart so you don't have to put yourself through certain adversities every single time that you pursue something. And as my mom mentioned earlier, follow your instinct and do what you need to do.